Over the last few years, it seems like American households have become re-obsessed with baking. And because of that, supermarkets experienced an unexpected surge in flour sales, so much so that flour was unavailable for weeks at a time. It seems like the brand that became the real star was King Arthur Flour. Bakers obsessed over King Arthur's exacting standards and consistency and joined chefs who were already devoted to the flour. Today, I wanted to see what makes King Arthur's flour so special and at the same time, learn the flour milling process from the ground up. So there's like some people baking some sourdoughs right now that I could really screw over. King Arthur doesn't actually grow or mill its own flour. They work with reliable partner farms and mills to get the quality they need. You're Ready? Yeah. Okay. Today, we're actually harvesting the last of this year's wheat crops with lifetime farmer Andrew Gee and taking that just over the horizon to panhandle milling to watch how it turns from wheat to the now iconic bags of flour. You know, the di disciples were walking through the fields and they were doing this. Okay. And that's exactly what the combine does. So the combines are just modern day disciples. Right. <laughs> There's the head, there's the beard, and then this is a gloom that covers the grain. Is this, is this the height you want, or every year it's a little different? Or? This, is a, this is a really poor wheat year in, in really? our area. Yeah. Our plant is not as high, the head is not as big, it doesn't have as many glooms across. It's been so terribly dry here, but you want to see it maybe that tall, and the head twice as long as that. When the machine actually cuts, it's separating at it's separating at the base. The goal is just to get the head. So the goal is to cut that and right. get just that. So low enough to get all the heads, yes. but not too low to what? Destroy the land? Well, to... you want to leave as much residue because residue holds moisture. From here, we hop in the combine to harvest the last of this year's wheat. Oh my God, the conveyors coming in make such magic. Very simply, the combine works by slicing the wheat using blades like a beard trimmer. Then the reels pull it onto the conveyor, which brings it into the center. It's then pulled under the carriage of the combine where it's broken and using a series of grates and fans, the grains are separated from the beards and stems. From here, it hangs out in the combine until it's ready to move on to a hopper and sent to a mill. So when you're in here, you're just trying to make sure that all, your, your, all your sickle's you at the right height your reels at the right height, and you're trying to get as much grain as you can in the past, with, as you said, without, without damaging too much of the stock. We want to leave as much residue as, as we much can residue. in, the, in yeah. the field, right? We harvested a lot of the field, but now we're going to send what we got over to the mill. Yeah, so we'll load it on the semi and be ground into flour and sold to King Arthur. Do you think it's crazy that what you harvest from your fields goes into like some of the fancy is baking no, goods. No, it's awesome that we know the link. Right. So many people are so far from it, they have no idea. It's 2% of the population working their tails off to feed the world. It's an honor to do it. From here, the grain will be transferred onto a semi-truck and driven over to panhandle milling, where it'll be milled into flour. Okay, so this here is the, the way station, and this is one of like 100 trucks that would come into panhandle milling today filled with wheat. This is where the truck comes in straight from where we saw it come off the farm. What happens here is they're gonna weigh it and they're gonna do some tests to, to ensure the quality of the, of the product coming in. So what are you checking on exactly? We are checking the moisture and the protein. So you'll get it from about three different spots. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. The wheat all comes in here and then we're gonna take a quick sample. So awesome. The next step for the wheat is the testing room, where the technician measures the protein content to determine if it's high enough for King Arthur or whether it'll be sent to another brand. And then a dockage test, which measures the level of stones and other non-wheat material in the sample. So this is shrunken and broken. If the wheat isn't pure and there's too much other stuff in it, the truck will be sent away. You got a lot of power in here. Yeah. <laughs> is it ever like a tiny bit up and you like the person and you're like, yeah, go ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Amazing. So this is super pure. Yes. He's, he's good to go. Good. Now the driver pulls away and heads over to one of the docking stations to deposit his wheat. All right, so what, what happens here? Flip the lock up, turn the gauge, and it's gonna open up. You wanna try it? Yeah, sure. Just keep spinning it all the way around until it's all the way open. So why wouldn't you just open it all the way up? So if you've got an empty pit, 
Yeah. You can because the pit's big enough. But uh, when you open it uh, really fast, uh, sometimes you'll just fill the whole area with dust. Oh, gotcha. And so it's uh, better to control the flow. Where's this wheat going? Yeah, so this wheat will drop down to the pit. From the pit, it'll be collected by a bucket elevator. And the bucket elevator is just basically a conveyor that's really tall, uh, full of uh, buckets to grab the wheat and elevate it all the way up. And that's where you get the name elevator. That's so awesome. Thank you so much. From here, Panhandle will store the wheat in one of 17 silos where it can be held for up to a year until the factory is ready to process it. Because we're right at the end of wheat harvesting season, all these silos are gonna be full. But by the time the trucks start rolling in again next year, they'll be mostly empty. This is our main flour mill. We're standing on top of the, uh, the roof of the flour mill. So you can see all of our, our bulk storage for the, for the grain. And you got a nice view of, uh, of our elevators. Uh, and uh, then the spouting that uh, we could select which, where we're going to uh, store the wheat. One of the reasons we use elevators is we can bring it up and then we can use gravity to our advantage and we'll let the process flow downward. This conveyor right here is the conveyor that brings from our bulk wheat storage brings it over to the mill, and, and we're ready to, ready to start the milling process. All right, let's, let's, go check, let's go check it out. The first step in milling is actually just a bigger version of the testing machine, which is meant to take out everything that isn't wheat, which is mostly rocks, sticks, and corn. All of our wheat, regardless of, of the properties or characteristics, we go through this machine. Uh, this is called our first break, and it takes the whole kernel here and breaks it once, and then I got another set of roller mills here and it does another set of process. You got two rolls that are rolling together and the product goes through the middle. And we actually have, you have one of those rolls that's moving a little faster than the other. And it also has a, a texture to the roll. And because one's moving faster, it creates a shearing action. Uh, again, that's yeah, that making that nice, nice flaky brand that's easy to work with in the mill. After the first grind, the wheat heads for one of what can be many trips to the sifting room. This board is just a visual representation of the output of these sifters. Each one of these sifters is doing the same thing, trying to send the flour to the most appropriate roller or all the way to bagging. All of this is for efficiency. The goal is to get the flour to finer than 212 microns in as few passes as possible so they can clear the line and bring in more wheat. After the first cracking, about 3% of flour is fine enough to go straight to bagging, but the rest will be sent back and forth from sifter to roller to sifter to roller, up to about six times before it's ready to go out. So the conveyor that runs through the middle of the room, it's our patent flour conveyor. So every spout that you see hitting this conveyor, the flour is uh, in, in this patent or finished form. What is it? What does this look like to you? Like all... Like a spider web. Like a spider web. But do you see the matrix of like this one needs like an extra little grind and this one needs to be? Yeah, yeah. So a good miller, they'll they'll visually know what each pipe's happening. Do you think you could do it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, our, our millers that do this day in and day out, and then live and breathe this. Yeah, they know it like the back of their hand. The flour is now finally ready for the packaging line, but first it's time to clean off. Next up is the packaging line. What I've learned about milling to this point is that they need to be as fast and as flexible as possible. So on this line, they're actually running 25 pound bags of their house brand. But on the next two lines over, they're running two different SKUs of King Arthur. Two different pack sizes and two different configurations of the bags. So right. these are single units. These are bundled together, six five pound bags in a bundle. And as it goes down the line, you can see how they get shrink wrapped together. So they're finally letting me do a job and put these bags on the line here. Which is the most important job is to keep this magazine full. All right. And I f***ed it. <laughs> I got it, I got it. There's a reason I shouldn't do anything. Now the best thing too, Dan, is to tap the top to make sure they're all flat. No product interruption. This this identification number on top of here, that'll trace you all the way back to the, to the farm? That the is field. correct. We can do a recall within four hours of a bag of flour and trace it back to the field. It's part of our certification. We have to do that, and, and actually King Arthur requires it. This identification code, the letter is our packer, the date that best diffused by, and, and the timestamp, and DA is the plant that it was manufactured. I love that in all of the genius machinery that went into designing these lines, the, the best way they figured out how to flatten the bag was by using the previous one 
as a, as a doorstop. Absolutely. You think about very simple technology that allows for the most efficiency. It's so fun when it happens. You were saying that this, this is really the, the identifier here of the King Arthur, right? Absolutely. It's the quality of the flour. 11.7% protein is the target, which is very unique in the retail world. And what does that mean? That means that there's only so much wheat you can accept for this bag? That is correct. We need at least 12.7 to 13 protein wheat in order to mill an 11.7 flour. In one of the final tests for King Arthur flour, the bags are broken open and the protein content is measured one last time. This is an IR or near infrared and it shoots uh, beams of light at the flour. It tests for uh, our moisture, our protein content, and also something we call ash. If this is outside of the range, then you'll send it back and either combine it with protein content that's lower or higher, or just send it off to one of your other products, right? Yeah, we do have a rework process. Everything gets used. After the packaging line, it's time for Panhandle's final test, which is actually a baking test, where they bake all sorts of things to see how the flour stands up. So this is like the final stage of, of King Art. Like, this is no joke. You really do bake things in here. Yes. To, to yep. Uh, test we have it out. a full kitchen to be able to bake test items. But how? But how do you know you're not just horrible at baking? And like, why? How do you know if it's the flour's fault or your fault? I I've always liked baking and <laughs> I've always been good at it. So I I think that I'm pretty good at it. Have you ever done a bake test and then you're like, I gotta call someone? Like, what what can yeah, go wrong? So especially with our mixes, um, every oh, once in a while, a sense, yeah. you'll get not enough flour in the product. Like something in the PLC system happened or they put too much salt or sugar, or they pop the two. So you call it like, hey, it's Jordan from the bakery. Like, you gotta hold, <laughs> hold the line on Yeah, that. pretty much, yep. <laughs> Can we all reach in? Yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, go right Come ahead. On. So you see no problems in this? No, I think the flour performed very well. As do I. <laughs> now that we've had our muffin and wrapped up King Arthur's final flour quality control test, it's time to see the bags palletized and sent out into the world. Here we actually ran into Brad Heald, who is the director of mill operations for King Arthur. He was on site today doing a quality control check. We're kind of at the end of the line yeah. for their process, right? And this is the beginning of, of our process, right? When we take possession of the flour. So how many of these mill partners do you have? In, in we have about 15 mill partners that we utilize. What's it feel like watching these pallets of flour? Oh, I love it. I love to see our, our label. I love to see it out there and, and being delivered. What What's the thing that's the biggest th sort of thorn in your side? Like, what is the thing that you're always having to keep keep close touch on? Well, each year provides different challenges for that, right? So sometimes it's sourcing and price. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's, you know, it's on time delivery. But what we do at King Arthur year over year is a consistent flower. So that consumer, when they open that bag of flour and they want that that muffin or that pie crust that they've done every year, that experience needs to be the same every year. And that's that's really what we strive to do. After spending the day watching King Arthur's process, what I've learned is everyone may want to start baking all of a sudden, but that doesn't mean they can make high protein wheat just magically appear. It takes farmers like Andrew, mills like Panhandle, and a lot of luck to produce the product we've grown to love.